Hello and welcome, guys. Thank you for joining me again for another night of Facebook Live. I also want to take time out just to recognize those that catch me on the replay from YouTube and or SoundCloud. I am your host and Trisha Bray Smith, author, educator, and public speaker. It is indeed a pleasure and a blessing to be here with you tonight. As tonight, we are continuing our series on daddy issues. We are continuing our series on daddy issues. Hi, Sharika. Thank you for being here, babe. So tonight we're going to take a look or try to take a look at dad's perspective. We're going to try to take a glimpse into dad's perspective. Now, uh, I don't know how much I have to give you tonight uh, because I've already had the conversations. I've already uh, dug in and, and, and really just uh, had a uh, talk with my family here. And so I don't know how much more I'm able to process and to share with you tonight. However, I do appreciate you taking out the time to be here with me. And as you guys are logging on and uh, joining me tonight, don't neglect to like and share this video, send up some hearts, and let's get this video circulating so that others connected to you can also um, join in and listen in on the conversation with us tonight. Hey, Tammy, how are you? So don't forget to like and share this video. I appreciate you guys coming on in. Also, let me just uh, give a few announcements uh, while we're here tonight. Uh, before we get started, uh, I will be participating in August Crenshaw's Worthy of Abundance Summit. That is this week, guys. That is this week. Wednesday, we kick it off. Um, and I will be speaking Wednesday at 1 o'clock Central Standard Time. So 1 o'clock our time, I will be on the platform uh, doing my session. And so I really appreciate your support in joining me in that conference. If you haven't already gotten your ticket, please make sure that you do that uh, as well. So it is important that you have a ticket. That is the way that you get your access into that uh, platform. Also, as a reminder for those of you that are in our area, uh, when you purchase your ticket and you want to make sure that you're able to access uh, that conference, you can join me at the Learning Center. You can join me at the Learning Center and I'll be glad to open it up so that you can come in and log on and be able to view the content. Uh, so to make sure that you have uh, the necessary uh, internet connection so that you're able to, to join me. Also in the link, you will see that I've also uh, put uh, the link to our YouTube channel. So for those of you who um, are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, uh, it's a good thing that if you enjoy these lives that you like and subscribe to our channel so that you can get the replays uh, or and, and you can even go back and look at videos. So all hundred and something videos that I've done on a variety of topics, it is uh, logged in there on our YouTube channel. So that is the link to that channel. So I see many of you are logging on already and I appreciate you, like I said, taking the time to be here, like and share this video. Tonight, we're looking at dad's perspective. We're looking at dad's perspective and I'll try to leave moms out of it for now. Uh, but we know that moms are the ones that birth life and we are the ones uh, uh, more often than not raising our boys and, and, and they're growing up into men and becoming dads. But today I just want to take a look at dad's perspective. And we have some dads that are stepping up to the plate and, and they're in families and they're marrying uh, the mothers of their children and they're trying to make a happy home and trying to break the cycles. But even when dad is in the home and he's there and he's present and he's providing and doing all that he can do to be dad. 
there can still be issues. There can still be issues. There can still be a little boy inside of him making decisions for the family. And so what does that look like? Even when dad is in the home, because we know not all dads are absent. Not all of them are absent. There are some dads in the home and even with them being in the home, uh, there can still pose some challenges for the family. Yes, I did have a good anniversary. Thanks for asking. <laughs> also, I did get that banana pudding too. <laughs> I got a banana pudding that was delivered today and it put me in a coma. <laughs> so I was in a diabetic coma for about three or four hours laying there on the couch after I ate it too, because uh, it was delicious. And of course I couldn't put it down. So dads, what is it? What What is your story? What is it that keeps you repeating the cycles? Why is it that we cannot break these cycles when it comes to uh, dad and our image of what dad is? I know many who have dads in the home and dads can be heartless and they are detached, not really having that nurturing uh, feeling or, or that nurturing contact with um, some of the children. There are dads that are in the home and they're drunk, they're addicted, they are in abusive relationships with their spouse or significant other. So they're being abused. There are dads that are in the home and they still have that gangster image. There are dads that uh, are there in the homes, but they really don't have a voice. So either they are the abuser or they are the ones that are being abused. And so we know that from dad's perspective, just him being there, oftentimes they feel like that is enough because maybe their dad was not there. And, and so now that they're there, they feel like they're breaking that cycle or maybe their dad was there and they were detached and so this is where they get that um, detachment uh, from the kids or from certain kids. Then we have the dads that are absent. And for whatever reason, they're absent from, and, and, and they're going from bed to bed. They are, they lack the ability to hold down jobs. They lack the ability to uh, know what being a father is or being that father figure is to uh, their child or to their children. Uh, they're repeating in their relationships. So it looks like all kinds of things, but from a dad's perspective, I'm curious to know how do we break these cycles? How do we impact change when it relates to daddy issues? How do we get our young men to a point to where they're not repeating our cycles as dads, but they're able to overcome and be able to um, raise up a generation of men that instead of hurting, they now become healers and begin to heal and change the dynamic of our families. So from a male's perspective, what has to happen. Hey, Keisha, how are you, baby? Hey, Lartavia, glad you're here. From a male's perspective, 
what has to occur is a man has to be in a position to where he is able to recognize that regardless of whether he was there in the house, whether he was present in the life of the child, or whether or not he had his own issues to deal with, he has to be willing to recognize and to admit, regardless of what has went on, regardless of the things that have occurred or transpired over the years, he did not do everything right. There is room for correction. There is room for things to get better. And, 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 and I say that, and it's easier said than actually done. Because what happens with the male, with the way the men are wired, sometimes that is the hardest step for a man to get to because of the thing called the ego or because of the thing called pride, sometimes we have men that only get to this point when they're on their deathbeds. And so they live a life instead of healing relationships with children that have been damaged or impacted through their issues over the years, what happens now is all of a sudden, you know, I'm at the end of my life and I need to get things right. So if we are not able as men to get to the point to where we're really ready to look at our issues for what they are and how I, our issues have been imposed upon our children, then we won't break this cycle. We will continue to repeat and repeat and repeat the issues as they relate to dads. And, and moms, we're not off the hook because we're the one raising these little boys up to become men and all of this. So we're not off the hook. So, so we're gonna get to us moms uh, in a later uh, session but tonight it's all about dad's perspectives. So from dad's perspective, we have to get to the point where we're really ready to have this conversation. We're really ready to look at ourselves as broken as we are. And as many things have, as, as, as we've done right or wrong, we really have to look at how our lives and our unresolved issues as dads and as the male uh, population, how they have impacted the family line from generation to generation. So you may not be what your daddy was. Your dad may have been hard. He may have been abuse, an abuser. He may have been a drunk. He may have been a deadbeat as we call him. He may have been a dog or a womanizer as we call him. But Whatever he was, we must be willing to admit that what he was really affected you. It really affected you. And this is why when you look at your children or when you look at uh, other people's children, the women's children that you're, 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 you're uh, been entrusted with, this is why we continue to have cycles of families that are dysfunctional and cycles of families that live in silence and cycles of families that uh, have a hard time really making the necessary adjustments in life because the men in the families, the men in the lineage have yet to stand up, really look themselves. Isn't that what daddy does? Done or not look moms as dads, as fathers, as male figures, as role models. We haven't always done everything right. And the way we break this, 
the way we begin to impact and start the healing process is being willing to look at ourselves and have that hard conversation with our children. And I know that there are men that are watching me today and, 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 and they're not ready. And I'm not talking about these young dads. I'm, I'm talking about some of these older dads, some of these aging dads. Some of them still have the mentality to where they want to blame somebody else. Some of them still have the mentality that they feel like somebody still owes them something. They still have this mentality that, uh, 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 that they're entitled to a certain level of respect or a certain uh, level of candor that um, they haven't been given simply because they are dads. But dad, I'm trying to look at things from your perspective tonight. I, I, I want to help us tonight. I want the families to begin to heal tonight. And I'm telling you, dads, we appreciate you. We love you. But there is a certain level of healing that needs to take place in the family that you hold the keys to. You hold the keys to. And it doesn't matter if you're 40 years old. It doesn't matter if you're 60 years old. It don't matter if you're 90 years old. If you still have breath in your body, it's still time. There's still opportunity to get it right. And until you do, the generation of men that are born under your bloodline will continue to repeat the cycle. So you hate your dad for the things that you saw your dad do or didn't do? Guess what? That little boy that looked up to you, that depended on you to be dad, he's repeating your cycle. Because you neglected to deal with the little boy inside of you that saw the hurt your dad inflicted on your mom or your dad betraying uh, your family. Because you failed to neglect to deal with that little boy, that little boy raised your little boy. And that cycle repeats and it repeats and repeats. I'm telling you, looking in your mindset, looking from your perspective and all that you've seen over the years. Hey, Diane, how are you, babe? I'm telling you that if you want this to end, if you want to see your bloodline do something different, you have to get to the point to where you're no longer defensive. You no longer have that pride. You no longer have that ego in the way and be willing to sit down and have a conversation. And this may be willing to admit where you were wrong. Because I know a lot of times we know where we're wrong. This may even looks like being able to hear some hard things coming from the mouths of our children. But what it does not give you or anybody else a right to do is to attack and to be defensive. It does not give us a right. Anything that we defend, anything that we tolerate, anything that, uh, causes us to not really want to look at it and hear other people's point of view of how it impacted them, it will not be healed. It will not. So I'm looking at my dad and my dad is already closed his uh, eyes in death. He's already gone on. And so I can only use it from uh, knowing him. My dad was a loving man, but he didn't do everything right. 
he didn't do everything right. And there were some things in my dad's lifetime that impacted him pretty deeply. And as a result of that, he lived a cycle of uh, having different women and being married multiple times and not being in the house with the children that uh, he, 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 he fathered. And so he was one of those dads that may have been in and out. And, and there were several of us kids. And with each of us kids, we all have a different image or a different perspective of how we saw dad. And so with him not doing everything right, with him having his own issues and with that little boy living inside of him and making decisions for him throughout his lifetime, throughout his lifespan and, and for, from the kids being at different ages and, and, and being birthed in different generations, we saw different aspects of who he is or who he was. And in return, that impacted each of us differently. And so I looked at dad, hey, Billy, how are you, hon? I looked at dad, how he lived his life and the women that uh, he married or, or that he entertained. And I looked, I looked at all that throughout the years and I had to really see things from his perspective. There was a fear in him and it was a fear of being alone or living alone or dying alone. And it came from somewhere. I looked at him, how he interacted with uh, his women and the type of women that uh, he attracted. And I looked at a series of abuse and a series of, 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 of enablement. That, that wasn't happen chance. It was because there was a little boy inside my dad making adult decisions. And so it impacted how he related to his children, us older ones much differently than the younger set of kids. And so what the younger kids were able to see and that dad that they known, us older ones sometimes were not there to see that dad. We, we didn't know him, but as he began to have his moment of healing and as he, hey Trinity, how are you, hon? As he was able to really come to grips and resolve some of the issues that he dealt with and having these conversations with his older kids and understanding how the things and the choices that he made impacted our lives was he able to in his latter years before closing his lot his eyes and death being able to come to terms and to realize that he didn't do everything right but what he can do is to uh make things right by having those conversations with us putting his ego aside and apologizing and letting us know that regardless of what things have been he loves us and he didn't want us to be like him. He wanted us to be so much better. He wanted us to uh, have a, a family, a stable family. He didn't want us to, to, to uh, repeat the cycles that he done. But we can have that conversation in anger and him not being able to be aware of where his mistakes or his issues impacted the family line. And so many of you right here, right now, you haven't even considered daddy's perspective. You have been, hey, Ann, how are you? You have been so frustrated with what you've seen. You have been so frustrated with what you heard. You have been so frustrated with your own hurts and betrayals and traumas that you haven't even considered to consider daddy's perspective. 
Why did dad hurt you? Why did you have to go through this? Why? And it is because dad himself is hurting as well. He has unresolved issues as well. He did, regardless of what you think, the best that he knew how to do. Bottom line. You know why he hurt you? Because he's hurting. You know why he neglected you? Because he was neglected. You know why he had an attitude of frustration and, and, and bitterness? Because that's what he saw. That's what he learned. You know why he's addicted and can't overcome that alcohol and that, that, that smoke or that drug? It's because of years of suppression of issues that he did not deal with. You know how he's going to overcome it? By laying that pride and that ego aside and stop feeling like somebody owes him something or somebody robbed him and really look at him for who he is and being able to have the conversation with the children that have been entrusted to him. I've never seen a bunch of group of men to say, they don't want that child to uh, be calling him daddy or to look up to him when he's not their dad, if he's not their real dad. It's a lot of daddy issues. So do you mean to tell me because a child doesn't have your blood that you can't be a model or a role model for that child? Did somebody hurt you that bad that you can't step in and, 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 and be a father figure for some, something that doesn't have your blood? And if you feel that way, it comes from somewhere. You mean to tell me you can't stop hurting children? raping and molesting and, and, and doing all that you do? You mean to tell me you can't stop doing that? You mean to tell me it's okay that you go out and you gang bang and you deal dope and you do all this? You mean to tell me that's okay? Things that we do, we do because there is a cycle. We mad at daddy. We didn't deal with our daddy issues. So now we're going to show him that we're going to be better. Guess what? You're going to be better without a plan. You're going to mess it up. You're going to be better without being able to let go of the things or get through or get over the things that, that, that impacted you and caused you to go that route. You're going to mess up. And not only are you messing up your life, you're messing up the lives of those that follow and look up to you, whether they're in your bloodline or not. I've only given birth to, to two young women. But you mean to tell me I can't be a mother or a role model to others that I haven't given birth to? And so to sit and hear a male be so egotistic or to be so caught up into his own uh, selfishness that can't stand up to be a role model because he can't get over his own ego and his own issues. Guys, we have to do better. Every daddy is not going to look like us. Everybody's issues is not going to look like ours, but we have to be willing to impact change to break these generational cycles as it relates to our daddy issues. Now, I put myself in the position of the dad's perspective, and you guys know I'm not a man, 
but I have to do it so that you dads that are listening to this broadcast have a safe place to process the issues that you have. Is it gonna hurt? Yes, it's gonna hurt. But is it necessary? You betcha. We have to get to the point to where we are able to allow our families an opportunity to heal. I don't want to see a young, another young man on the street feeling like dealing dope is the only way of life or the only way to make money. And why do they do that? Because dad done it. And dad made it seem like it was okay. I don't want to see another young man live that gangster life when he doesn't have to. Why does he do that? Because dad did it. And so if dad did it, it's okay. And it's the image that he portrayed. I don't want to see another young man smoke it up. I don't want to see another young man drink it up. I don't want to see another young man dope it up or snort it up. I don't want to see another that feels like or have the perception that somebody owes them something or feel like they have been robbed of something. It's time to look at the little boy within. And just because dad was a pervert and dad was a child molester and dad was an alcoholic and dad was a deadbeat and dad laid with women, different women and, and had kids all over the place does not mean that you have to repeat the cycle. It can be broken. And so what if you've already started? Doesn't mean that you have to live the rest of your life doing the things that you do, that you know you need to change. Do you know one of the most powerful things you can do, dads, is to sit down and have that conversation with your children and with those women that you've messed over years and years and years have that conversation and to have that conversation without attacking one another and to have that conversation without uh, being defensive and to have that conversation and, and, and just let it heal. So what if the tears fall? So what if your feelings get hurt? So what if you really have to take a long, hard look at where the roots of all this begins? So what if you have to go back and look at your daddy or your grandfather and all that. No, they were not perfect. And when we really take a look at the family dynamics and the cycles that repeat over and over and over again, you can stop it. But you cannot stop it doing the same thing that you have been doing for the past however many years. So if you've been an absent father, you can change that. If you're a father that is addicted and an alcoholic and a father that uh, is not really in the house or, or not really involved and really hadn't been the stand-up guy, the role model that you desire for your kids, you can change that. It's not too late. You know when it's too late? It's too late when you take your last breath. That's when it's too late. We're looking at it from your perspective. We know that the things that have been going on are going on because you have been hurt and that you have unresolved issues and that you feel like you have been robbed of your father figure or you feel like that uh, you didn't get all that you needed. But I've given you a solution tonight. As we're looking at it from your perspective and we're seeing it from your point of view, I've given you a solution tonight. Are you willing to break the cycle? And we're not attacking you. I'm showing everybody what it looks like from dad's perspective. 
And the hardest step to making the correction and to making it right is the first step. And that's just being willing to sit down and communicate and really look at things for what they are without being defensive and without uh, uh, being uh, feeling like you're attacked or without feeling sorry for yourself or really just really wanting to hear and understand how what you've done and how what you do has impacted even your children. Because it does. It's hard for a child who's looking for a dad to put their arms around them and tell them that uh, everything's going to be okay or to help them feel safe uh, or, or, or to tell them that they're proud of them. It, it, it's hard for a child not being able to have a relationship with their dad because their dad's living a lifestyle that puts them, their lives in danger. It's hard for a child looking for his dad, but his dad is over there taking care of uh, another woman in her family. It, it's, a, it's hard because they're looking at it from the child's perspective, but not being able to really attack these issues and address these issues and being able to share what they feel and being able to release all that emotion and that hurt, the cycle is going to repeat itself. And we can tell them all day long, don't be like me, be better than me. But our children love us dads. They don't see no wrong in us. And the hurt and the anger that they express toward us, they, they don't want to feel that way toward you. They want to see you heal just like they want to heal. And that ought to be enough to want to break that generational cycle. Hey, mom. Hey, Renata, how are you? It ought to be enough. So we've looked at it from the dad's perspectives. Now, dads, the ball is back in your court. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to help these babies heal? Are y'all going to heal together? Or are you going to allow another generation of your bloodline to live in that hurt and pain that you've neglected to, to address? We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. I appreciate you guys taking out the time to join me tonight. I know that it is a sacrifice for you to be here with me every night at 10 p.m. I'll be right back here tomorrow for another night of Facebook Live on another uh, topic series as it relates to daddy's issues, daddy issues. I am your host and Trisha Bray Smith, author, educator, and public speaker. Good night, everybody. <laughs>